there is a lot of negligence in this country. And personally, I don't know what can be done to stop it. Precious talent in Dagoretti, a primary school, collapsed today. And it collapsed with several students inside. And it shows, it confirms that in this country, there's nothing which thrives like negligence. There are people at the Ministry of Education who are supposed to supervise schools. They didn't do their job. So it has taken this building to collapse and seven students to die for the Ministry of Education through the Cabinet Secretary to issue directives. So I want you to listen to the speech or the address by Cabinet Secretary for Education, Professor George Magoha, addressing Kenyans after this, the, the collapse of that school. Listen in. Go down. Please, please go down and behave. Please. please go down. Everybody go down. So, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, like we did promise that we're going to have a comprehensive uh, a briefing regarding this unfortunate incident. Uh, this is the time, and we've been very fortunate to get with us here the CS uh, Minister of Education. Uh, Professor Magoha, who will be the presiding uh, uh, officer today. Flanked, will be flanked by the Principal Secretary, uh, Ministry of uh, Education, Dr. Uh, Sang, and also together with the uh, Principal Secretary, uh, Ministry of ICT, Mr. Jerome Ochen. Before the Minister begins to uh, brief you a few house rules, I will get an opportunity to ask questions. As you ask questions, please do not forget to mention your name and the media house that you represent. Additionally, let's keep the questions to the scope of this briefing only. So, Minister, sir, please. Please allow the Minister to please give some space. Please, 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 please. Uh, good afternoon. On behalf of the Government of Kenya and on my own behalf, I wish to convey our deepest condolences to the families, friends and relatives of the precious talent primary school uh, for the tragedy that befell the community this morning. I received this news, this sad news, while I was uh, away on official engagement in Kisumu, which I have had to cut short to rush here to join my colleagues in government to deal with this. So far, ladies and gentlemen, we have regrettably lost seven young lives to this morning's incident that occurred at around 8 a.m. as the learners classes 5 to 8 were starting their morning lessons. May the good Lord rest their souls in perfect peace. 64 learners are admitted at Kenyatta National Hospital. Of these, 62 have soft tissue injuries, while two require more attention. More than 600 learners underwent safety checks at the nearby St. Mary's Catholic Center. The government officials have visited Kenyatta National Hospital and confirmed that all the learners admitted to the institution are in stable condition. I shall also visit the patients in the next few minutes. The school is duly registered and has an enrollment of 800 learners. We have set a multi-agency group comprising officials from the county government, local leaders, ministries of education, interior and coordination, and the national government and the Ministry of Health, together with the Kenya Red Cross, to manage this situation. The team will also conduct thorough investigations on the possible causes of this tragedy and submit the report for me for uh, urgent action. In the meantime, we have asked learners to stay at their homes over the next four days as we put in place adequate measures to ensure their safety of learning. I want to add by saying very firmly and categorically that the children of Kenya are safe in schools. 
and that we should not forget that we have close to 35,000 primary schools. And this single uh, tragic incident must not be used by anyone to instill fear in our children in both public and private primary and secondary schools. I would like to state that uh, beyond this, the government through my ministry is going to continue to monitor and assure the safety of all our children who, in my opinion, are all the same irrespective of where they come from. We will keep providing uh, updates to this situation uh, and in order to preempt a, a question which I am sure will be coming, there was another building that was uh, in the news yesterday that had cracks. I think uh, my people in the field are already there and adequate action is being taken to ensure that children in that part of the country are not exposed for any extra minute to a situation that can endanger their lives. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, CS, for that update. My name is Seth Olale for NTV. You've talked about adequate measures being taken, but more so focus on the informal settlements. There are a lot of such structures put up. We're talking about Kibera, we're talking about Madare, and an official from NBI did mention that Huduma, Huruma area is the worst hit when it comes to such construction. What will your ministry do to ensure that such an occurrence is prevented in the future? First of all, let us be very, very clear that the government of the Republic of Kenya puts its children first. In this locality, uh, we have 19 full-fledged primary schools whose capacities are reasonably adequate. But then it comes to a matter of choice of parents. I am duly advised that the nearest public primary school from here is only two kilometers away. But then we are a democratic country, and our role as government must be restricted to ensuring that the quality of the schools that are available are safe enough. Let me leave it there. Just the last for me, there was a concern that in this particular area, Ngando, Ward, in the Goreti South, there's no single public learning institution. Is your ministry concerned about that? You should rephrase your question because Lenana, as far as I'm concerned, is a huge public. Primary schools, sir. Primary schools. Public learning primary school. The government will work towards establishing one. I have told you that the nearest is only two kilometers away. And the issue should not be the borders of, of the world. The issue should be the proximity of the school to where the learners live. But since we are Kenyans and you like to, to dramatize issues, we will commit as government to construct a primary school in Gandu. We shall ensure that land is made available by whatever means possible. And by the grace of God, perhaps in the next uh, three to four months, you will have a primary school here. Let's have some order. Yes. Let me, let, let me answer you in, in English to be very, very clear in what I'm going to tell you. You have noticed that I've been to all the other classrooms. And in my most humble opinion, they are stable. So if, if a spade must be called a spade ahead of the investigations which you are pushing me to say, you notice that this, somebody went and built another story on top of the temporary structure. And I think for you to be fair to me, you should have allowed our investigations to, to get there. Now, if you go ahead and do so, and you don't get anybody's approval, I think we should be fair to each other, including being fair to government. Because if, if the owners of this school had remained with a, a single-story building, 
this accident should not have occurred. If we were working in an ideal situation, I come to ask for approval from the ministry, which I can guarantee you they would never have gotten. I have about 1,500 officers doing quality assurance all over the country. And I must defend them because with 30,000, over 30,000 primary schools, something like this can slip your, your sight. And I want to take responsibility as, as, as the, the, the minister and government who is responsible that I will continue to inspect and to ensure that people comply with the law. I think that is the bottom line. That is the bottom line because after I've gone around here, if there was no other story put on top of that building, these innocent children would not have died. I don't want to apportion blame to anybody, but I'm just telling you that this requires everybody, everybody's contribution, not just government, including the proprietors and your most humble self. Maybe two more, two more, two more. Yes. Jumbele. We have official hours, which I am sure you are aware of, and I'm not about to repeat them. Compliance is mandatory. Are we together? Because we have lost children, I have not come here to blame anybody. But anybody who goes against the ministry's official hours for the children to be at school should be answerable to somebody, isn't it? We have to get this very clearly. We have official hours for the children, which I am sure you are aware of. And everybody must comply. Everybody, whether private or public. So maybe go now. Here in like I have said, for avoidance of repeating myself, we have consulted, and because some of the children who passed on were even in the examination class, we have decided that all the children should rest for the last four days until next Monday, during which time the investigations will have been done. The buildings will have been re-inspected again thoroughly by professionals, and then we will give an informed advice, which may go in the direction of perhaps some of the children coming back to classes which are safe, or going to public primary schools, the farthest of which is only about uh, two kilometers away. The last one. No, 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 no. Okay. okay. Then thank you very much. I will give another update.